Well, hello, Darkfish Rally friends. It's the end of Saturday here at the Safari Rally Kenya. What a day we have had. The biggest day of the event, 160 kilometers, six stages. We went to Elementitis, Soy Sambu. We then went to the Sleeping Warrior. It's a day that promised a lot, and my goodness me, it delivered mountains. It really did. There was so much drama out in the stages. There was so much going on. At times, it was difficult to keep up what, with what was going on out there. There was so much happening, really everywhere across the field. But we went into the day with Cali Robin Perra leading the field by quite a healthy margin. And I have to say, once again, Cali Robin Perra was the class of the field. Every other driver has had issues apart from this young man. I'm pretty sure uh, on the rough places I drive quite cleverly. Um, all the tires, let's say, coming to service have been in quite good condition. No big hits, no big marks. So it has to mean something. We, we go around the stones more than the others probably or, or something and that has been the plan. So it has been working well. You know, is that something you were very aware of during the recce? Just putting that extra detail into your notes to allow you to be as cautious as you've been? Yeah, I think uh, we had good notes. Um, also, I remember quite well, my memory is good. So I think on these kind of situations, I can use it on my my benefit, let's say. And uh, yeah, the plan has been the good, let's say, from the start. We haven't been stressing about going too fast when it's not needed and just keeping their own pace all the time. Yeah, he's a clever kid, isn't he, Kali Rovenpera? His experience and his wisdom belies those years. It really does. He's had the most intelligent approach. We've said that from the start here. Intelligence, precision, patience. It's what it's about. Robin Perra has shown it all in bundles and fully deserves the enormous lead that he takes into the final day. Who's in second place? Well, it's that safari battler. It is Takamoto Katsuta. My goodness me, he fights and he battles and he never gives up here. And that's what he's had to do today. At one point, you know, his position on the podium was an enormous doubt. Two punctures on the first running through Sleeping Warrior, but he fought back and we caught up with him in second place here just a little while ago. This morning after Sleeping Warrior, it was a big, big disappointment because um, I was really trying to, let's say, avoiding the problems, but obviously this one, we hit a big, big rock and then we got double puncture, so... Yeah, felt very disappointed because of this mistake, but uh, obviously it was, most of the drivers got the dispuncture, so somehow it was quite lucky. Um, then second pass, we knew that uh, we'll be very tough again, so just driving through, then we got another problem on the car, so it was quite uh, demanding, uh, very difficult, like every section we had to check the, everything on the display, but we managed it, so that was good. What more can you tell us about that problem? You know, it, it did look like a difficult one to deal with. What was that problem? <laughs> Maybe you should ask uh, somebody from the team. <laughs> something to do with the anti-lag, the, the, the car needing to be reset? Uh, yeah, something like, something like that, yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> Sorry, Kai. <laughs> no, it's quite all right. It's quite all right. Yeah, tremendous effort out there today from Takamoto Katsuta and Aaron Johnson. The two of them worked beautifully to work through those issues in that final stage. What about our third place man? Well, it is Adrian Formo. He's been quiet, hasn't he? Not really had any issues. He's had a plan and he has stuck to that plan through every stage of the rally so far. That M Sport Puma, it has been faultless. Not an issue with any of the three M Sport Pumas. And that has allowed Adrian Formo to stick to his plan. He's in a solid third place at the end of the day. And there's a smile on the young Frenchman's face. Yeah, it was a good day. I'm really pleased with uh, the day we have done. Quite really sensible on the walkie place this morning, uh, afternoon or so, and then uh, pushing when the, the, the road was more clear. So I'm quite happy with the pace we had uh, today. Uh, the car been really good also so I'm really pleased uh, so we are so tonight it's really good points now so we have to, to get it tomorrow so. Did you perhaps see an opportunity in that final stage with that weather coming in did you think about that at all you're on the road or the boys behind you and you know did you did you maybe up things a little bit in that final stage to take advantage of the rain that might have been coming? A bit like in Sweden uh, I knew we could take uh, some good points so I decided to push unfortunately I had a puncture uh, that was my mistake but uh, we were in the pace, he would not take uh, 40 seconds, so, so it, was, it was good. 
and he also had a puncture unfortunately for him so so it's really good for us it's a big gap now uh, for tomorrow now for sure we, we have been pushing the last one well not even a puncture in the final stage was able to remove that smile from the young frenchman's face he's shaping up to be a real challenger this year isn't he challenger certainly for podiums i think there'll be more to come fingers crossed he holds on to that podium tomorrow so what about our other drivers? Remember, Alvin Evans was in a podium place at the start of the day. Uh, is he in fourth? I think he is in fourth. He's another one who's had to fight his way through issues, mainly issues with punctures again. When the punctures come, punctures come, yeah, they can be unexpected. Yes, they can be bad luck. But generally, you pick up punctures when you're pushing hard, when maybe you're taking more risks than you would like to take. Elvin has upped his performance today. He's, he's felt for sure more comfortable in that car, more capable of producing speed in that car. He's pushed it and at times, unfortunately, that has resulted maybe just in the car going a little wide and he struggled with punctures. The good news for Elvin Evans though is he's ahead of his two championship rivals. He's ahead of Thierry Neuville and he's ahead of Oitanak. So Saturday points, he's the one that picks up more than the others. He did say to us though, for him, it's a story of what might have been, what he could have had in terms of the differentiation between him and Thierry Neuville. But he's got to be happy with those issues to have finished in fourth place. Fifth, it is Thierry Neuville. I tell you what, let's hear from Thierry. He had, again, a myriad of problems out there today. You know, you weren't telling us the stage ends, but what can you tell us about those issues? Not much. The car wasn't running. Uh, we couldn't fix it. Um, and we lost a lot of time. An issue you've come across before? No, not really. Um, I don't know. They're going to analyze, but uh, yeah, somehow uh, we weren't capable of fixing it. Um, we at the end were running in a safe mode at the, in the last stage, which allows more or less 60% of performance, I would say. So we got somehow through without too much trouble. Um, it's a shame we couldn't get that information before before the stage before because we lost seven minutes over there and would probably has, have kept kept us in front of Elfin. But it is what it is. We lose important points in the championship, that's for sure. Um, but uh, it's still early in the season and uh, again, uh, we kept fighting and we're going to continue fighting tomorrow as well. Clearly, we know there are points to improve on the car, but uh, with the current regulations, it's not possible to improve anything. And uh, um, I think that's something clearly to review as well for the future. Uh, because if you want to have a competitive championship, you need to have competitors who are fighting and uh, being on the same level. And clearly, in Kenya, since four years, it's not the case. So uh, uh, it's hard for the team to get it right because uh, uh, there are things we can't change on the car and we have to, to work with it. But I also have to mention that the problem we face this weekend is not related to a safari rally. Yeah, Thierry Neuville, he found himself in second place going into the lunchtime service, down in fifth at the end of the day. Do you know what? Stage 11, those problems started. Stage 12, we were at the end of the stage and the issues with Thierry created a bottleneck of drivers there. Oh, as I said earlier, it was difficult to work out at times what was going on in those stages. Trying to keep on top of it was almost impossible, but he lives to fight another day. Clearly, though, concerned about the reliability of that I-20. Further down, Oitanak. Mm, lots of problems for him as well. He had issues even before he went into the first stage of the morning. Well, what about the third of our high Hyundai's Esapeka Lappi? Oh, uh, you couldn't have made it up, the problems he had. <laughs> he had a few issues. He's testing a few parts on the car. He had one or two issues with the car itself. But more than that, he had issues with wildlife out there. He had a bit of an incident with a zebra. In the final stage, two enormous birds at two different sections in the stage. We do have vulture-like eagles. They are vast. They've got enormous wingspans. He's hit one of those a couple of kilometers down the stage. He's hit another one, shattering the windscreen, glass shreds going into Esapeka Lapi's eyes, making things really difficult. But he did get here to the uh, final service point. His eyes looked okay. They weren't too bloodshot. He is going to go and have a chat with the doctor just to make sure that everything is okay there. So, what about Gregoire Munster? Wow, Gregoire Munster. Oh, poor boy. Uh, he had some issues. If you want to see the issues that Munster had, press that button there. George Donaldson, who's with us this weekend, and we're loving having George with us, he caught up with Gregoire just after he came through a stage with serious damage to his suspension. Press that button and you'll find out what happened. Do you know what? We looked for a little bit of a sea of tranquility amongst all of that drama out there. Where did we find it? Well, 
was kind of found in WRC2. Gus Greensmith is the man who had a healthy lead overnight. He also was carrying a bit of sickness. He's carried that sickness through today. He's managed that lead, and it's still impressive going into the final day. He leads in WRC2 by over two minutes from a charging Oliver Solberg. That is one that we will watch again tomorrow. So, folks, oh, it's, been, it's been dramatic. It's been dramatic. It's been exhausting. And that's without the rain. Can you imagine if that rain had come as was forecast in the final run through the Sleeping Warrior stage. It just would have been one of those just almost impossible days. Thank goodness, thank goodness it stayed dry for the majority of the day. Don't forget, there is the button that you have to press if you missed any of that drama. When I go home tonight, I am going to go and have a look at Dirtfish Live Centre, just to remind myself, there's a whole load I'm sure I missed. So I'll be pressing that button myself and going to DLC to catch up on all that's happened there. Folks, listen. Tomorrow is not a Sunday stroll on the country lanes. It is far from it. Six stages, 70 k's tomorrow. There is still plenty more to come. Skies are fairly dark. You never quite know what's going to happen here. It changes in five minutes. Torrential rain here at the service park earlier today. What might we expect tomorrow? Who knows? Who knows? But Robin Perra has been supreme today. Can he convert it tomorrow? Stick with us, folks. Dirtfish.com. That is where you will find out. Thank you.